The companion uh, relationship is a way of uh, doing good in a part of the world that desperately needs uh, our help, but for us, it's a way of rediscovering what mission means. I find uh, living partnerships, living friendships, living relationships is uh, what the church is made of. It's the sacramental reality that makes us who we are. And joining hands with sisters and brothers across the globe um, is a way of discovering what the mission of the church means in our own context. Uh, you come back from visiting um, uh, Christians in a place where we're making uh, a difference simply by being in partnership with them, you come back with very fresh eyes uh, and a refreshed heart to uh, know, I think, at a deeper level what God's calling us to do right in our own backyard. In 2001, a resolution was presented to the Diocesan Convention and was uh, unanimously accepted and we became formal companion relationship dioceses together, Rank and Chicago. We have a different culture, we have a different thinking, we have a different thing, but Jesus Christ brought us together as a one family so that we can work together to accomplish the work that Jesus given uh, to us. So my prayers always for this uh, companion diocese is that whatever God given to our hand in order to make it us possible in order to be successful. With our power, we will not do it. But by the grace of God, everything will go well. The vision for the relationship, the purpose, um, is to very first of all pray for each other. And that is always at the top of any conversation with the people in Sudan. So prayer, visits back and forth, are very important to strengthen the relationships. We learn from each other. We learn from seeing where each other live, how we worship, how we, uh, what our cultures are like, and then also uh, sharing resources. Uh, their resource being faith abundantly, and our resources actually having to do with, uh, with the financial support. ده محل كويس لانه ده هكلي بيت جامع هنا والطلبة دي قاعدين يمشي كاسر ولا كان إنه ما في محل بيشيله هنا لكن لو في كنيسة كبير هم هيجي هنا يجي يصلي هنا وممكن يساعد ليال بيت الحلة دي يدرسهم عشان يكون يال بيت المستقبل أنا بشوف كنيسة ده كنيسة ده إنه مستقبل كبير جدا لأنه أنا بيعين إنه الكنيسة ذاته وقع في النص بتاعة المدينة يعني هو بقى فين الطرفين مدينة كده وال وال هنا الكنيسة في النص بتاعة المدينة ففي مستقبل أنا بعين الكنيسة ده حيكون كنيسة قوي شديد إذا في بنا بنو مباني كويس وحوشوا لسور الكنيسة ونظموا حاجات المحتاجين له هنا في الكنيسة كان هنا دارين دورة بتاعة الحمامات ودارين سور عشان السور الناس بتورس على سور الكنيسة فدي الحاجات ده هنا طالبينهم في مستقبل الكنيسة ده حيبقى كنيسة وحيبقى كنيسة قوية جدا لأنه في أطفال نحن بنرى على أطفال هنا بيجونا بكمية كبيرة نحن ما بنكون بناس ما بفترة بتاعنا حيكون بسيط لكن فترة بتاع أطفال حيكون أكثر نحن حنجي نبنو أطفال يكون أبناء بتاع كنيسة وكنيسة ده حيتنور أكثر وأكثر وبقوة بتاع ربنا لأنه ربنا يوم نادي الناس بتاعه في حزيرة بتاعه وبيجي بالنميم وبخليهم يبنو ناس كويسين ناس بتاع مستقبل The Diocese of Chicago uh, encourages in this companion relationship uh, parishes throughout the diocese, churches to form individual partnerships with churches in rank. And through communication and visits and so forth with, um, in, to rank, 
we learn about needs and parishes have stepped up to partner in particular with other churches in rank in order to provide them with prayer support, uh, with financial resources so that their churches can be built, maintained, their clergy can be supported. Because if clergy are not supported properly, they cannot be a resource to their people who depend upon them. Virginia does things differently. Uh, we have many different mission relationships as a diocese, and so we have no single companion diocese relationship. Our relationship with Rank began in 1997 with the covenant of three parishes in Northern Virginia with Bishop Daniel and his diocese. They are Christ Church Alexandria, St. Paul's Alexandria, and Church of the Apostles in Fairfax. The Church of the Apostles dropped out and was replaced by St. Mary's in Arlington. And we have continued to work with Bishop Daniel and then with Bishop Joseph. Uh, clinic, famine relief, uh, purchase of the boat, the papyrus on which Jackie sailed, uh, work with uh, visiting teachers from time to time. Some of our clergy have been there as visiting teachers. Um, construction of the cathedral in 2006 and a variety of other projects that have gone forward. The roof of the yok, the biak de kicham, then Elena Eran Purichin, Ko Nakirab Lok, Kicham Eagle, Canaan, the roof to a yen of the yok. Dang Yakagro, Wichin Gayogam Koi, Chicanes, another Koi Yoga, Mavichiri, a yoga lip. Namia <laughs> We're empowering people in Sudan to uh, uh, fund, uh, maintain, and advance uh, the infrastructure, uh, the, uh, their way of life so that they can proclaim the gospel uh, uh, to more and more people and uh, make the love and mercy of God a reality um, by uh, advancing their own uh, economic, social, and uh, healthcare systems. The restaurant uh, is in two ways. One way for the community, those who are working in the cafeteria, and others to support the passes of St. Peter. It is good that in the in community is wonderful for the people, even official in the government. They came and then they sit, they talk, they drink tea and, and cold water. Yeah, they are feeling all right. Yabulena Sita Gurufa Umete Kulus na Kema de Shakari Lisa Kema de Shaha Uman Nas Bishiru be 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 an interesting project that comes to mind is um, the uh, taxi, which um, was uh, the need was brought to the attention of Christ Church Winnetka during a visit by uh, Bishop Joseph a few years ago, and uh, the subject came up because. The goal is to have income generating projects in the various churches and locations. And the taxi is one way that Joseph was telling all of us 
uh, can really be a good income generating project. It not only provides transportation for uh, the, the pastor to get around, but it also can be used any other occasion as a taxi as we do here and people pay to use it. And uh, so out of that conversation, um, a couple was struck by that and approached Bishop Joseph and said, we, 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 wanna, we wanna buy a taxi, how much is that? And I believe that was a $5,000 gift and uh, it is running and doing its work uh, in uh, Paloch, the, uh, the parish area where Christ Church Winnetka has its relationship. One of the learnings that all of us have come back with, especially our bishops, is the extraordinary poverty there matched on the other side by extraordinary wealth of spiritual resources and belief and the joy of the people. What we've seen there uh, has been a surprise in some ways because the people there, when you see this material privation, they say what we want most is education, which is a startling answer to Americans. We've also seen tangible needs that are quite important and very moving. In our case, we've worked with them on terms of the clinic, uh, epidemic relief in 1999, uh, sending a Ugandan doctor in 2002, sending a Virginia doctor in 2004 um, and helping to construct a new building for the clinic that's now on the uh, Bible College grounds in 2007. I was fortunate to be there during that construction, which was a, a great joy. We were able to have put that money, Christ Church in this case, to have constructed that clinic. This ties in with the Millennium Development Goals, particularly because it addresses infant mortality it addresses malaria, it addresses uh, uh, helping women's health, uh, all of which are important priorities. So those are some of the observations we've had. We've supported other projects as well in terms of agriculture and uh, education. I became to love medical field. I found it beneficial to yourself with good knowledge in medicine. You. You study every day. You go on continuing reading and studying and go on with so many courses. So I came to love the job by itself. And I came to love to help my people. I'm really being liked by, by the people very much. Where I work, I'm too crowded by the patients. That means I have to, to help them. Basic health care in Sudan is just that, basic. And an example of why that's such a compelling uh, need for development happened uh, during our trip. The Rank Media team's trip uh, included a key uh, lay leader in the Diocese of Rank, Chief Bjor, um, who is a remarkable uh, witness for the gospel and a leader uh, for his people. We were uh, traveling in the diocese and he became quite ill uh, with an intestinal uh, problem. Healthcare simply uh, wasn't available that was adequate uh, to his sudden illness, which was rather serious. He had to be transported uh, over bumpy uh, roads in a four-wheel drive vehicle for a 10-hour transport to get uh, even uh, basic appropriate care. It's simply not available. And uh, here's a, a guy whose leadership is uh, critical uh, for keeping many other people uh, engaged and alive even, whose own health care uh, suddenly became that close to the edge. I 
on duk on wak o pig bin ne sunga wak e o asa acha on tin tabik on balba o gere ya gwa ke ekin tene o par ekin par tuk kelis ya bal ke jige during the years uh, of the war over 40 years of war you can imagine that the church was held together simply by people of faith uh, meeting under the trees and uh, following what the missionaries taught them that God was with them always and so they kept that they kept to that and uh, and then they started to build churches out of local materials mud and uh, straw and so forth thatched roofs well um, we all know that termites do a lot of damage and they really have uh, a, a day with those churches. And the rains come and the mud, does, uh, you know, washes away. And so they are constantly having to patch their churches or they just let them fall in disrepair and they do continue to pray under the tree. Well, now with peace on the horizon, we hope it will be maintained. Um, Many, many of the refugees that fled are returning. More and more people, the church is growing, and they do need brick and a and zinc roof so that they do not have to continue to be praying and patching, patching and praying. They can just be praying and praying. So uh, this is a very important sign of hope that we give them and solidarity that we give them. And it's just extremely important when you see some of the churches and the conditions that they are. Um, they're dark. They're, you can't stand up straight in them. Um, none of us would tolerate that. And, and, and we, so we have, we have been called, really, to, to walk with them in developing stronger buildings so, as they grow. Kanisa, are we a way in? Kaka, team. Bishop Frank Gray joined us in 1999, and his assignment was to do mission, uh, which was like telling a painter you can only work with colors. Uh, he's a wonderful missioner, understands it theologically and practically. And he went in 2004 and visited with Daniel and Rank and understood the need on the ground for a visible presence in a solid cathedral. When you go out on the river, you'll see all these minarets and so forth. The tangible physical presence of a church in a solid permanent building sends a very important message. And so Frank raised the money um, Ten thousand dollars to throw from many of us in Virginia uh, to build the cathedral. Daniel hired a very good young engineer and built a very solid, well-founded cathedral. And uh, we were then invited to help dedicate it in 2006. And uh, Daniel managed to get the Archbishop of Canterbury to come in and help do that service. Uh, I did ask him if he could also get the Pope, but he said no. He was booked that day, so. Um, that cathedral has been an important symbol to the people there. There's a lady dean of the cathedral, one of the few in the Anglican communion, Martha Dangmiel, who's a very gifted preacher and teacher. And uh, I had the pleasure to attend there in 2007 and to show the importance of having lady clergy. When you look out in the congregation, all the men sat on one side and all the women sat on the other. So there's a long way to go towards gender equality in Sudan, and the church is taking a leading role in that in a visible and effective way. We also fight this issue in terms of schooling, uh, trying to make sure that people send both their daughters and their sons to the schools. And so in rank, it's about 50-50. In some of the more rural schools, it's about two to one uh, boys to girls. So the church is making progress in moving people towards gender equality. So uh, whatever benefit <clears throat> or support we get from uh, our companion diocese, we went to education. In order, we, we are looking to create uh, a new generation whom they get a good education so that they can make a turning point in the life of uh, Sudanese uh, people. Uh, 
Seeing four pillars in the middle of nowhere in Rank Town and Bishop Daniel at the time saying this is the start of our Bible school. And we agreed, yes, that was nice, but how is that going to happen? Well, one day at St. Michael's, a uh, family came to me and said, we, have, we would like to give a substantial gift. I knew that Bishop Daniel's prayers for that school to be built were, were primary with him to train clergy and lay leaders in the church. And uh, so I consulted with Bishop Daniel, um, who said that very day he had been praying so hard about the Bible school. And uh, it was approved. Uh, the, the donors were very happy to do it. And the first building went up um, with local materials, mud, thatched roof, and so forth. Uh, even the library, um, separate kitchen, and that was, that was wonderful to do. They were very happy and they were now on their way. Well, um, not too long after that, uh, I think it was 2004, the, um, or 2005, the Northern government needed that property, they said, for a highway. And so demolished the Bible school. Uh, that required St. Michael's to step up and which it happily did, we did. We raised $50,000 to rebuild the school. And uh, because of the support of St. Michael's, focused on Rank Theological College, it is now called Rank Theological College. And it is now a part of the five college system approved by the Episcopal Church of Sudan. The church's role is uh, try in order to train people at the uh, Chinese saying, uh, train person to fish and instead to give him fish every day. So we get a grant uh, last year, uh, 20,000 US dollar uh, from San Barnabas in the, the Diocese of Chicago, uh, Glen Island, and uh, that we give it to women as a loan so that they can run their own business. And my focus is that if the woman became strong financially, then the, our houses or our family became strong. When we landed in Khartoum in 1998, I had lots of different visions of what might take place. But what actually took place was I sat down with Amos Awan, who was a Bible translator, and much to my surprise began to discuss the difficulties of translating the Old Testament into his native language, Dinka, the language of two million people there. I was very naive about Bible translation at that point, thinking almost all of it had been done. It's not. There are about 3,000 languages where it's not been done. There is no Old Testament in Dinka, uh, and I realized fairly quickly how critical that absence is. Here you have the people who have experienced genocide, displacement, dispersion, uh, exile, famine, and all sorts of disasters for nearly 40 years of civil war. And yet you had no biblical source to sanctify, to give meaning to that ghastly suffering. The Old Testament with Isaiah, with Jeremiah, with Psalms helps give meaning theologically to that and also to the whole New Testament. And so it's a critical piece to help these folks make sense of the terrible suffering that they have so far endured. We have worked to try to support that effort of translation. It's Wycliffe Bible Translators, first class outfit, both through diocesan contributions, through parish contributions. Occasionally I put up a matching contribution uh, to help keep this moving forward. We have visited the translators. They've been on the road uh, to the Kakuma refugee camp, Katali, Kenya. Uh, they went on to Entebbe. They're now back in Juba. But each time we go to one of these places, we try very hard to visit with the translators to encourage them and to work with them. This is a great time for us to be accompanied, like the time when we were accompanied during the war. 
this is a full a time for for our partners now to step up seriously campaigning on advocates to see to it that the church and the Sudan and the people in Sudan and the government in Sudan they should not be allowed to go back to war. Bishop Daniel was um, very much looking for people to come to Sudan. Everywhere he went, he said, uh, where are you? We are suffering, we are dying for our faith, and where are you? And, and people would say, well, what can we do? Tell us, what can we do? And Bishop Daniel's constant remark was, come and see, and then you will know what to do. And it was true. We went and we saw, and now there are clinics, there are schools, there's a theological college, and a, a beautiful cathedral, much to our um, involvement, but more so because they prayed and they made it happen and they invited us to come along. I want to issue an invitation to anybody who wants to have their own sense of mission and ministry refreshed, both in their personal lives and in their corporate life as a church, to become a companion. That can mean uh, a formal companion relationship with a congregation in rank. Uh, that can mean uh, undertaking uh, the support of a particular project, of which there are plenty to go around do something, join in, join hands, uh, join me, join us as we partner with sisters and brothers in a part of the world where the gospel means life in a way that we need to hear.